Welcome to the Cincinnati Children's Heritage Video Series. This video is a project of the Medical Staff Historical Committee. I'm Dr. Elaine Billmeyer, a community pediatrician and a member of the Historical Committee. With me is B. Katz, a longtime employee of marketing and communication and the author of a photo history of Cincinnati Children's uh, published on the uh, occasion of its 125th anniversary. Our topic today is the early history of the Division of Neonatology, and we have with us three uh, longtime members of that department. Uh, Dr. Erwin Light is professor, uh, Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics and OBGYN. Uh, he was with the Neonatology uh, faculty for over 40 years, uh, also spent 20 years as the Director of the Institutional Review Board. Dr. Paul Perlstein, um, also Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics and OBGYN, also a faculty member for about 40 years, has been extensively involved in research, uh, including, among other things, uh, neonatal temperature management. And we have Dr. Uma Kodigal, uh, Professor of Pediatrics and OBGYN, former director of the nurseries and NICU at both Cincinnati Children's and um, the University. Uh, she's been the driving force behind the uh, transformation of healthcare delivery at Children's, and she currently serves as uh, executive leader for population health. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming. Um, why don't we start by having each of you just briefly tell us how you happen to come to Children's, and then we'll go back and kind of talk about the history of the department. Or when you want to okay. start. Yeah. I uh, grew up, trained, did my residency in, in Montreal. I decided that I would like to pursue a career in newborn care, and there was not more than a handful of institutions at the time that offered uh, Columbia, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, perhaps Chicago. And they faculty member at Children's in Montreal who had spent a year here with training with Jim Sutherland in pulmonary uh, uh, disease um, suggested that I come here to take a look. So I came to talk to Jim. This was one of the most prominent programs. There was the day of Fred Silverman and Sam Kaplan. Joe Warkany and Malbert Saban. It was hard not to say this. <laughs> there was the opportunity to come here, yeah. so I chose okay. to come here. That was okay. 1963. Okay, all right. Maybe we should go to you, Paul. Since we're doing you, this you were by next age. By <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guessed it, yeah. <laughs> in any case, I went to medical school in uh, Utah, in Salt Lake City, and my professor of pediatrics was a fellow named Gene Leahy who was uh, head of hematology here uh, years before I met him. And uh, I fell in love with the pediatrics group there uh, and uh, somehow wanted to follow their path. And uh, after I finished medical school, I actually took a rotating internship in Cook County in Chicago. And then I just wanted to be a family practitioner and decided I didn't want to be a pediatrician. Uh, but then I decided I wasn't good enough to be a family practitioner because <laughs> you have to know too much. Uh, and so I decided to focus on pediatrics and uh, Cincinnati was close enough uh, to Chicago where I was living uh, so we could afford to drive down. Uh, and uh, was accepted to the program and I was immediately uh, disappointed. This was uh, 1963 <laughs> because up to that point, Pappy Weech had been chairman. And he was a mythic character. And one just simply wanted to study under Pappy Weech. But uh, he left that year and a fellow came from Texas called Ed Pratt. And he looked like Bert Lark. <laughs> and and he, he made me laugh, but I, I really wasn't that enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Well, he became my favorite mentor in the whole world. Wow. And, and so I forevermore would want to come back. He encouraged me to stay after my residency for a chief residency year. And after that, I was committed by the Berry Plan to go into the Air Force uh, for two years. 
and I did just that. But fortunately, I had a good friend who was at Andrews Air Force Base uh, and allowed me to get into Andrews Air Force Base, which was kind of a cushy Air Force <laughs> job for a pediatrician, and uh, uh, had one of two of the best years of my life in medicine and fell in love with general pediatrics. And that was my goal in life, to be a general pediatrician uh, in California where my family was. And I wanted a gimmick. I knew that family practice would be all right, and my gimmick, uh, as I saw it, would be newborns. And so I planned on going to either Seattle, where there was a great program, or to uh, Israel. Uh, and that was 1967. The 1967 war broke out, and I wasn't about to take my family into a war zone. Uh, and I came here instead after talking to Jim Sutherland on the phone. And he accepted me with the full knowledge that my intent was to be here only one year. <laughs> and that one year uh, would be my gimmick year. And after that, I'd go into, fa into general pediatric practice. Uh, and he accepted that and said, yeah. If, if that's how it works out, that's how it works out, uh, we'll see. And that's how I came here okay. and, and finally got offered a job. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me interject because okay. Paul reminds me yes, of yes. part of the story that I didn't tell you. My intent when I was in Canada was to be a pediatrician in private practice. Uh -huh. And the requirements there for the fellowship exam were very rigid, based on the British system. And you needed a year of non-clinical teaching, scientific research. And for some reason, newborn care, neonatology didn't exist, but newborn care was not considered part of the general pediatric, was acceptable. I came here for one year to complete that part of the training. By October, November, you've got to decide what you're going to do. You've only been here three months. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, I'll stay a second year, and then we'll decide. So I know why I came. I know why I was here the first year. I know why I was here the second year. I know why I'm here now. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened in between. <laughs> Uma, did All you right. come for one year too? Or? So I'm sitting between these two giants, and my story is not quite that... Uh, dramatic, I think. Uh, I decided that I wanted to be a neonatologist my first day of medical school. The field was not developed in India, and uh, so I decided to come to the U.S. It was really on a whim. I had already been accepted to the master's program in, in, uh, in pediatrics in India, but I really wanted to be a neonatologist. And the field, as I said, in India was, not, was non-existent. Mm -hmm. So I came to Detroit to do my internship, 1971, post-Vietnam. Uh, really, really quite, uh, quite an unpleasant uh, time. <laughs> uh, took care of heroin addicts, and, and the, my first year as a rotating intern at the Detroit Receiving Hospital, where I learned how to sew up gunshots. <laughs> <laughs> and then went to the children's hospital to be a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. I met this young man the first day I came to this country uh -huh. who moved to Cincinnati to do a nephrology fellowship following a mentor who he had met in Chicago at Michael Reese. And so when the decision to do a fellowship came, um, I came to Cincinnati. I came and interviewed. Jim was here at that time, as were Erwin and Paul and Bill Keenan, who was probably mm -hmm fairly active at that time, I would say, in, in all things clinical. And uh, so it seemed like a decent place to come, and mm -hmm. I had little idea of the history or the fantastic place that it was. Mm -hmm. But I basically came here to be with Shashi. Okay, excellent, all right. So set the stage for us now. This is a relatively new specialty. So tell us what neonatology how, how it all began. And well, you've heard talk mm -hmm. about Jim mm -hmm. Sutherland. Right. And in 1953, 54, mm -hmm. 
Jim was chief resident in pediatrics at the Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Weech, who you heard mm -hmm. was referred to mm -hmm. affectionately as Pappy Weech, mm -hmm. was chairman of the Department of mm -hmm. Pediatrics. Mm -hmm. And he recommended, suggested to Jim, that he go to Boston, spend two years in the newborn nursery with Clement Smith at Harvard, mm -hmm. which was the center for newborn mm -hmm. care at, in the country at that time, mm -hmm. and then return here to establish a newborn division. Mm -hmm. So he returned here in 1958, and he was the division, the <laughs> newborn division. Mm -hmm. uh, of interest, but in, uh, in the next year or two, he recognized the great uh, baby syndrome mm -hmm. due to, uh, as the result of uh, chloramphenicol toxicity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's estimated that probably saved the lives of thousands of babies. Wow. Could be discussed separately. That was so, one of the, that he himself, he, he was. He, made he was the he, one he that first, he, he was that, the first person to that recognize diagnosis. that. Wow. Published it in mm -hmm. an uh, article mm -hmm. in the American mm -hmm. Journal. Mm -hmm. Disease of children, based on observations mm -hmm. in five children or something, mm -hmm. a very astute clinical mm -hmm. observation. Mm -hmm. So I came here in 1963. Mm -hmm. The division, cons there was no neonatology, the mm -hmm. word didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The newborn mm -hmm. division mm -hmm. consisted of Jim Sutherland, a secretary, and two technicians. Mm -hmm. It was located in the bowels <laughs> of the basement of uh, J Pavilion in the old Cincinnati General Hospital. Uh -huh. And the nursery, there were, the newborn nursery was one floor up on uh, J and K, and the preemie nursery mm -hmm. was located over on H1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The preemie nursery at that time, the preemie nursery, yeah. at that time was staffed by four uh, community pediatricians. Okay. Ed Wagner, uh -huh. Danny Jones, Jim Engler, and Bill DeVoe. Mm -hmm. And they came in Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 to 11 <laughs> oh and rounded goodness. in the nursery. Oh my, oh my goodness. But there wasn't much to do. Yeah. There was an incubator mm -hmm. and there was feeding babies. Uh -huh. There were no IVs, mm -hmm. certainly no ventilators. Mm -hmm. uh, An incubator to, for warming, ox for were they warming, doing oxygen for back then? You, for giving oxygen. Uh -huh controlling humidity, mm -hmm. keeping warm. That was a very important mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Were there but many there were babies? No, hmm? Were there many babies in this kind of care? There were 20. Oh. Mm -hmm. By definition, at mm -hmm. that point, mm -hmm. any baby under 2,500 grams, five and a half pounds, mm -hmm. was by definition a premature baby. The okay. concept of small for gestational age uh -huh. did not exist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In fact, it was a paper by Joe Orkney with Jim Sutherland's wife, Betty, oh. that was the first one that described what was called intrauterine growth mm. retardation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that recognized that you could be mature, mm -hmm. but, sm but small. There were big mm -hmm. babies, mm -hmm. and guess yeah. what? Mm -hmm. There were small babies. Mm -hmm. wow. And that led to the concept small for gestational mm -hmm. age. Appropriate for gestational, large for gestational age. I said there were no IVs at the yeah, time. Yeah. There were no needles small enough uh, to be able to mm. do a, a, mm. an IV. Mm -hmm. It happened that I came from Montreal, and there was a neonatologist there by the name of Bob Usher. Mm -hmm. And Bob Usher got into the metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemia, mm -hmm. uh, asphyxia, uh, uh, metabolic disorders associated mm -hmm. with uh, respiratory mm -hmm. distress. Mm -hmm. Syndrome, and in order to cor correct that, he started giving IVs with bicarb mm -hmm. and glucose water. Mm -hmm. Well, I came, and people approached me as if it was the coming of the Messiah. <laughs> well, tell me about Bob Usher uh, and how uh, do you do these? I was a resident. I was the, the first-year fellow, and it was bringing you know this. It was a, considered a remarkable step mm -hmm. forward. Babies were fed with NG tubes. Uh -huh. But the nurse was not allowed to pass the, the NG tube. Mm -hmm. If the NG tube had to be passed, the resident mm -hmm. was called mm -hmm. in the middle of the night to mm -hmm. come and pass the tube. Wow. There was wow. exchange transfusions. Mm -hmm. There was three antibiotics. Uh -huh. The treatment of choice used to be streptomycin chloramphenicol. Mm -hmm. Then it was discovered that chloramphenicol 
killed babies. Yeah. So fortunately, canamycin came, mm -hmm. and it replaced that. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to know a whole yeah. lot about uh, yeah. treatment exchange and care. Exchange transfusions, probably mm -hmm. for RH exchange, back then. And exchange, certainly no mm -hmm. phototherapy. Okay, exchange, before that. No yeah. ventilators mm -hmm. and exchange transfusion. Yeah. You want uh, I, I, I would, it's just I, I would amazing. just echo everything uh -huh. Irwin has said. Mm -hmm. uh, and he knows a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he and his wife Janet, mm -hmm. who's out of view right now but mm -hmm. sitting here, uh, did uh, establish a very long-lasting relationship mm -hmm. with Jim Sutherland. Mm -hmm and wrote a book about him mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, got from his own mouth the history that you seek today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and more. Mm -hmm. But my memory of that old nursery is very positive. And in spite of the fact that we have such high-tech things going on in nurseries today, mm -hmm. that nursery excelled because of people. Mm -hmm. That was in the days when nurses were few and far between, mm -hmm. but not nursing aides. Mm -hmm. The ventilators of those days mm -hmm. were people, real people. Mm -hmm. This wasn't artificial <laughs> intelligence. This mm -hmm. was real intelligence. Mm -hmm. And they were amazing observers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my own career, one of the first observations I was credited with was that some babies didn't breathe well when their incubators warmed up. Mm. And when I proudly came in to tell one of the nurses who was breathing a baby, mm. uh, did you know that when the incubator <laughs> warms up, uh, some babies don't breathe well? She said, you mean when that little light goes on? The heater in the incubator. <laughs> oh, yeah, we all know that. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell somebody? Well, no one ever asked. But uh, this was an amazing time, and I think mm. it's something we've lost mm -hmm. uh, with our ventilators that don't think. That, that, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I just well, wanted to add yeah. that. What was yeah, the you should know that there was no intensive neonatal intensive care nursery at Children's Hospital at that time. It was all at the U. It was only and, and over the, here. General. The uh -huh. newborns, when, they, when on occasion they were transported, mm -hmm. went to the infant ward, which was two center, right, Paul? Okay. And that was for children zero to one year of age. And that's where the newborns were with the one-year-olds with croup or whatever it was. And gastro that, and that all they that, had. Yeah. And right. certainly there was no transport system. Mm -hmm. And when a few babies did get transported, mm -hmm. it was often in the back seat of the car, yeah. mm -hmm. wrapped in blankets, mm -hmm. or in a portable mm -hmm. incubator that may mm -hmm. be here was well, a metal box with some yeah, you, hot water yeah. bottles and, a, and an oxygen tank, and you carried it and you brought the baby. Mm -hmm. And so there was, the transport system did not exist. And there was, the, the main source of infants from outside of this institution were infants of diabetic mothers. Because mm -hmm. the mothers uh -huh. would be transported here uh -huh. for care during pregnancy uh -huh. with Harvey Knowles, who was renowned uh -huh. Uh -huh. for the management mm -hmm. of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then they would deliver here, and then the babies would be cared for here. Mm -hmm. And I know that was Reggie Sang's area mm -hmm. of research, yes. infants with yeah. diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And the children, yeah. uh, the, the youngest ward, the ward that had these young babies, the babies in them, uh -huh. uh, was in fact an amazing training ground for the house staff. Mm -hmm. It was there that I learned mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fell in love with babies. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I did it mm -hmm. university at Cincinnati General Hospital, yeah. Yeah. but I fell in love there because it was there that we took care of all post-operative babies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the cardiac babies, the babies that Jim Helmsworth operated on mm -hmm. for congenital heart oh, disease. Oh, uh, and I use these names because I know they're in some of your yeah. other testimonies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was quite a remarkable, broad experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a young mm -hmm. physician. Uh, with amazing mentors. Yeah. The yeah. teachers so, were terrific. So over your careers, you started when, um, I don't want to use the word primitive, but you didn't <laughs> have those. Um, you've seen phenomenal changes in the field of neonatology, and 
I know you all were involved in research that helped develop that field, so we'd love to hear a little bit about the work that you did and the advances that mm -hmm. you had a hand in. Um, Before we get to the yeah. research scientific part of it, mm -hmm. extending this clinical yeah. discussion, because okay. mm -hmm. I said that there was one faculty person, yeah. mm -hmm. one fellow, mm -hmm. you know, two, two, and so right. on, and nothing at Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, 1970, mm -hmm. the newborn intensive care nursery opened at Children's Hospital on One East. That was the first. When we approached yeah. the administration to do that, so that those babies on Two Center that were with the mm -hmm. older infants could, have, could be have yeah. their own separate unit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they said, "Well, how many uh, beds? How many would you need?" <laughs> and we suggested that a census of 20 was probably appropriate. <laughs> and there was resistance to that because it was ridiculous. You'll never have 20 babies here. It'll be a waste of space. Ah. Within, uh, I don't know, say a week, but a month, <laughs> we were over oversubscribed <laughs> and, we, and we didn't have enough room. By the mid-1970s, mm -hmm. that faculty of one person mm -hmm. had expanded, including mm -hmm. people present here to 10 faculty yeah. mm -hmm. with 10 fellows, mm -hmm. which was, I believe, the largest newborn division mm -hmm. in, in the entire country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so were, that happened over about a 10, 12, yeah. 15 year span. Yeah. yeah, you were on faculty When I came in 75 right. as a fellow, there was a nursery at the Children's Hospital, okay. One East. Yeah. There mm -hmm. was a nursery at the University Hospital. There was mm -hmm. a preemie nursery at the University mm -hmm. Hospital. There were, I think, three fellows the year I joined. Mm -hmm. Steve Minton, who had oh, been chief resident, yeah, Ed yeah. Donovan, who yeah. had been in, mm -hmm. had gone out to Arizona for a couple of years mm -hmm. after his residency mm -hmm. in myself. Mm -hmm. But speaking about research, what I remember most of that time were two important trials that happened when I was a fellow. The mm -hmm. first was a trial on the use of phototherapy versus exchange transfusion. Wow. for newborn preterm mm -hmm. infants with hyperbilirubinemia. I think Bill Keenan was the, mm -hmm. was at that time, was, was Bill kind of the residency person, the fellowship person, and Bill kind of seemed to have his hands mm -hmm. in pretty much everything that was going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in the division of neonatology. Mm -hmm. But we had a large randomized trial, mm -hmm. and I as a fellow remember, of, uh, of uh, phototherapy versus um, exchange transfusions. Mm -hmm. And I think we, I think we just spent our entire time here because all <laughs> those preterm kids would require those exchange transfusions mm -hmm. almost every six to oh. eight hours. It oh, felt okay. like it we were exchanging them. We did a lot of those. And then the yeah. second, I think, when I finished my fellowship, the second big trial was Reggie's trial with Harvey Knowles around mm -hmm. um, pregnant diabetic uh, women. Mm -hmm. and it was a program project grant in diabetes, mm -hmm. specifically looking at mm -hmm. Uh, treatment of women who were diabetic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I remember Ed Pratt at that time mm -hmm. was chair, mm -hmm. coming over and sitting with us as a fellow. We were, we were involved in the program project grant, but Ed would be there the whole time, mm -hmm. Dr. Pratt talking, you know, trying to think about the studies we should do, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, in what would happen. Mm -hmm. those, those exchange transfusions consumed Oh my nearly goodness. all <laughs> oh my goodness all my yeah. waking hours yeah. and yeah. we were on call I don't know how often we did a but lot of it was a lot of we did a lot of those yeah. when you were well, a resident you did that oh yeah oh yeah I mean with the yeah. with the fellows with the faculty it was just yeah it was a long process 45 well, 45 minutes was the time limit yeah. uh, uh -huh. from the time you made the decision to the time it happened mm -hmm. but put this in the context mm -hmm. for a house staff member mm -hmm. when part of the responsibility for the resident was to run Billy Rubens. Mm -hmm. The laboratory didn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you did your own white counts, you did your own hematocrits, glucoses. you did glucoses. your old glucoses, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was amazing how little sleep <laughs> uh, residents got in those days. And uh, I don't know if that was good or bad, but in yeah. fact it yeah. was just different. That's how it was, yeah. Well, what was the survival rate? That, well, first of all, how premature uh, babies, well, I mean, when I, when I what degree of prematurity were we, could we even take I started, care of? I would say yeah. a baby under 1,700 grams mm. was considered a challenge. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a life and death situation. Mm -hmm. But that was, mm -hmm. a of course, the challenge was keep them in an incubator, mm -hmm. feed them and give them mm -hmm. antibiotics yeah. exchange. Yeah. But that would be mm -hmm. 1,200 grams was 
considered a real threshold. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. certainly under a thousand mm -hmm. was a non viable yeah. non viable fetus. Yeah. Yeah. And many people argued there was no point in treating Don't them. Yeah. Could not cost efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. They had severe retardation, but, yeah. but a thousand grams was the nets mm -hmm. would be what two and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. But uh, under twelve hundred grams was mm -hmm. things were getting. But put tough. into put in put into that context mm -hmm. that still there was no such thing as small for gestational age, yeah. and uh -huh. so it was all based so, on weight right. and not right. on and gestation. Not on it was all weight. Yeah. 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 When did the respirators, actual ventilators? I can tell you that. I figured you could. <laughs> it was called a Bourne's respirator. Okay. And when I came in 1968, okay. Dr. Sutherland was on vacation. And I went to a fellow called Irwin Light, who I really didn't know then, <laughs> who was on faculty now, and I said, you know. what should I do with my time now that Dr. Sutherland is gone? And Erwin said, I don't know, uh, read this article. And it was an article uh, by a German author, by David Brooke, on temperature control. That headed me into a career. Mm -hmm. However, on the ward, Dr. Sutherland had bought all sorts of equipment. And in the premature nursery, there was a boxed instrument mm -hmm. called a Bourne's respirator mm -hmm. that had never been set up. And I set up the first <laughs> respirator, uh -huh. and it was a disaster. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. <laughs> but but I have but you have to I have start just somewhere. given myself credit mm -hmm. for <laughs> bringing respirator care uh -huh. to Cincinnati. But what was it? The respirators were all even later were def were were designed weren't designed for infants. Okay. Nobody the, the term surfactant well was a, no, didn't we exist. Did. Nobody knew. The pulmonary respiratory distress syndrome mm -hmm. was attributed to a whole other problem and had nothing to do with surfactant because uh, people didn't even didn't know it existed. Know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when the baby went on a ventilator it was that was a last ditch stand, right? Uh -huh. That was like we got nothing else left to do. What do we got to lose? Mm -hmm. Put them on a ventilator to see what happens. So there were a few of them. Paul that made and it. Bill, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, even before Uma, I guess, uh -huh. early uh -huh. 70s, uh -huh. started doing that. Uh, and and well, go back to the exchange transfusion, yeah, okay. which you recall. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't have instruments uh, in those days. There was a machine mm -hmm. that you connect to a baby mm -hmm. that would tell you the heart rate went click. Click, <laughs> click, click, click. It didn't count anything. Mm -hmm. You just heard click, click mm -hmm. through the exchange transfusion, mm -hmm. which gave you clues mm -hmm. as to which medication to give mm -hmm. at what time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until quite late relative mm -hmm. to all that that the first instruments appeared, mm -hmm. like a thermistor that was yeah. invented in Yellow Springs, mm -hmm. a way to measure temperature, to transduce temperature. It wasn't an instrument, it was a, a wire. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that they connected to an instrument. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple things made major differences mm -hmm. in, I don't know, it's in survival as much as in opportunity to learn about babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting yeah. because I mentioned this Bob Busher mm -hmm. therapy for metabolic acid. Mm -hmm. There was much debate about it at the time, whether it really made a difference in saving the lives of infants or not. Because mm -hmm. many people argued that what Bob was really doing was spending a lot of time, it was the intensity of care and attention uh, that mm -hmm. made the difference. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mm -hmm. about the fluids and the glucose. Uh -huh. it, was the, it, was the, it was the level the of eyes. care that was being, uh -huh. being provided. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I joined Cincinnati Children's in 1985, and by that time, Alcyon was really a big deal. One of the very first things that happened when I came to Children's is that Reggie Sang welcomed me and offered an opportunity to see the newborn unit and to see the research areas over at, mm -hmm. in the MSB building where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And so there were major changes, obviously, between the 70s and by 1985. Can, how did you come to design that I technology? I design Alcyon. Uh, we, had, we had an engineer, the, mm. Dr. Sutherland, mm. uh, was a very modern man. Mm. 
years after I published papers on this computerized incubator control system, it wasn't about incubator control, it was about using computers <laughs> in, in the nursery, using them mm -hmm. to transduce things and mm -hmm. to store things. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Sutherland had hired an engineer, mm -hmm. a student, just graduated, mm -hmm. Neil Edwards mm -hmm. from, from, from UC. Mm -hmm. And he came in with all sorts of things that he could do, mm -hmm. make equipment that hadn't existed. Mm -hmm. And he happened to have been one of the first engineering students to have been uh, interested in computers and mm -hmm. computer sciences. Mm -hmm. He could speak in zeros and ones. <laughs> and he had a mm -hmm. colleague who mm -hmm. came later mm -hmm. who also was a machine mm -hmm. guy. But years after I had made a career, I found a little notebook of, of, of Jim Sutherland's in which he essentially drew out this system mm -hmm. that I prided myself mm -hmm. in as mm -hmm. being the father of, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm like 10 years after he thought of it. Uh, and I didn't know that. Wow. So wow. He, mm -hmm. he had a vision mm -hmm. that he didn't share, mm -hmm. but somehow he guided us mm -hmm. in a direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may recognize here that mm -hmm. there's a theme. In the days, the 1960s or whatever, neonatology, the study, it was the study of newborn infants. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the study of Billy Rubin, mm -hmm. surfactant, mm -hmm. glucose. Mm -hmm. It was the infant. Mm -hmm. I think it's part of what attracted us. Those of us who wanted to be pediatricians, mm -hmm. who went on to be new neonatologists, because mm -hmm. it involved the whole infant. Mm -hmm. And Jim, when he was asked, well, uh, when they had the scientific advisory committee, and he was asked, what are the research, what are the goals and objectives mm -hmm. of the newborn division? Mm -hmm looking for a specific tra uh, track. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, the goals, and I always teased them about this, ever, were ever changing kaleidoscopic. <laughs> His ideas came out of the nursery mm -hmm. and what you saw in the babies and it was unresolved. Mm -hmm. And that formed the basis, whether it was bilirubin, mm -hmm. exchange transfusion, mm -hmm. respirator, computer, mm -hmm whichever direction things went. Mm -hmm. So the, the division had a very broad perspective mm -hmm. in terms of research. Yeah. So yeah. Uma, I know you saw some things, you observed some things going on in the nursery that led to some major changes in the direction of your well, own I career. Think, uh, when I came, there were some master clinicians and most of the system was in their heads. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they observed, they visited the nursery, they made they drew conclusions, and it depended on the skill of the people. It wasn't quite a system. Mm -hmm. I think the Alcyon, you know, system that Paul was on point for with Neil and Harry and others provided data that was minute by minute, uh, uh, allowed us to develop some theories about what was causing what. Mm -hmm. Because in the otherwise, the observations were I would say not that systematic. There were individual observations, great geniuses, you mm -hmm. know, that made them. Jim, Jim graphed all the time. Mm -hmm. When Jim attended in the nursery and you attended with him, mm -hmm. he would be off, you know, with the charts, plotting data. And I remember mm -hmm. in his office, he would be, his office was all black, wasn't it black, it was painted black I think or some <laughs> and he would be in there would be like a cave and he uh -huh. would be plotting I mean my first understanding of variation came from Jim's work uh -huh. Uh -huh. and Alcyon mm -hmm. that was when I first began to observe what later came to be called common cause and special cause variation but mm -hmm. there were conclusions drawn about variation and its impact and you know the data on apnea and the and the gradients between the skin temperature and the air temperature, mm -hmm. all of that was really variation. I would say my earliest memories of variation mm -hmm. were really Jim's graphs mm -hmm. that he did when he was attending mm -hmm. in, the, in the nursery. Mm -hmm. I spent my time in the laboratory with Dr. Kleinman, Lenny Kleinman, mm -hmm. 
because I was interested in physiology and I spent my time studying other aspects mm -hmm. of whole system work and polycythemia and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and that laboratory was a very impressive laboratory. Lenny was a physiologist mm -hmm. and was part of the Department of Physiology and so we had access to people thinking about systems in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I think that was hugely valuable for me in understanding what was going on. Mm -hmm. I think it was important to remember that with Alcyon and with Jim and Irwin and Paul's leadership, there was a database. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was an extensive database that documented mm -hmm. course and outcome mm -hmm. that enabled, I think, this division to be able to segment and understand. And these are words I know now, what I knew then <laughs> was they would <laughs> yeah. be talking about and reporting mm -hmm. on, you know, what that system did and what it produced. Mm -hmm. I think the mm -hmm. computer room was about the size of this room, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. And there would be Harry and Neil always there, mm -hmm. kind of watching and observing and reacting. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just remember being able to take a computer home and before I went to bed being able to look at blood gases and thermal mm -hmm. documentation and calling the nursery and saying, mm -hmm. why is that kid laying on his probe? <laughs> <laughs> because that was, that was kind of how yeah. you could do. So we came yeah. into a system, Jeff came in at the yeah. same time, he was a fellow I, when I was and began to really think more about surfactants, the mm -hmm. first randomized trials on mm -hmm. surfactant happened then, mm -hmm. Which is you when? know. 1980 something, the New England Journal of Medicine something. paper on, on a randomized trial on mm -hmm. surfactant, mm -hmm. the randomized trial on mm -hmm. phototherapy versus exchange mm -hmm. transfusion. So mm -hmm. there was a, a lot of clinical mm -hmm. research activity mm -hmm. in the division that supplemented all of these wise people's individual mm -hmm. observations. Mm -hmm. Friday morning mm -hmm. rounds in the nursery was exceptionally painful mm -hmm. and exceptionally mm -hmm. ridiculous. Everybody <laughs> arrived at 9.30, I think, and it was for an hour. You as a fellow were required to pick a patient and present. Mm -hmm. They were mostly there to make fun of you. You know, they were mostly there just to sort of, you were the goat that day, and you just had to put up with it. And the questions got more and more crazy, more and more demanding. And then at the end of the hour, everybody would leave. Mm -hmm until next Friday. <laughs> so as a fellow, this was like the drama I experienced from these very nice and very kind people, but they were unbelievably difficult to work Sounds like, well, yeah, yeah, well, sounds like bedside rounds. <laughs> sounds like bedside rounds in internal medicine. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't all bedside, just Friday morning. Just Friday morning. Remember that Friday morning <laughs> thing that you oh, guys yeah. did? Yes. So I grew up, I mean, I grew up in a, in a context of very smart people. Um, Sometimes, uh, you know, Jim was very private. I mean, you, you really, to learn from him, you had to sort of mm -hmm. follow him and keep asking, because mm -hmm. he wasn't, he wouldn't just mm -hmm. say, well, well, obviously you can yeah. see blah, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. he, but he had made all these observations. Well, I looked at, I learned a variation from yeah. there. I learned yeah. about variation from Paul and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Alcyon computer mm -hmm. and collecting data over time and the charts over time. Yeah. So much of the modern mm -hmm. quality improvement that, you know, I've come to learn really yeah had its roots in yeah. vast, amazing clinical observations that were documented yeah. and hypotheses mm -hmm. generated that were tested mm -hmm. in fairly complicated uh, randomized trials. Mm -hmm. Uma reminds me that uh, nothing arises like a phoenix. Nothing mm -hmm. just appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And this database fixation mm -hmm is in fact something that we were all raised with. Mm -hmm. You've heard of the baby's milk fund before. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that was a remarkable community service mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. went on for so many years. Mm -hmm. And every baby that came to our nursery and was in that program mm -hmm. had a card mm -hmm. that was kept in a filing system mm -hmm that could box. be accessed yeah. uh -huh. and studied. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, was, uh -huh. uh, it was not a computer, mm -hmm. but it was incredible. <laughs> it was uh -huh. You got yeah. access to the card uh -huh. with a needle, yeah. and there were uh -huh. holes punched. Uh -huh. 
So if you wanted oh. Caucasian infants, uh -huh. you oh. went in and it picked out oh, the ones that you wanted. Oh my goodness. And you would drop everything else uh -huh. out uh -huh. and you could pick. And it was, oh, so in a way it was like a. Yeah. It was a registry. A, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. It was a, it was a oh. registry wow. and Alcyon was a special That's database of, of uh, populations of kids that That's you could study. So the clinical research going yeah. on in the yeah. division was, was quite spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Answering yeah. very, very important questions. Yeah. And we, I'm not sure, but though that, yeah. that database may mm. still exist. Uh -huh. I remember <laughs> we discussed it. Should uh -huh. it be destroyed or mm. should it be mm -hmm. saved? And it was put in a filing cabinet. The filing yeah. cabinets were put uh -huh. someplace. I have no clue where they ended up. They're oh. probably... Be they may, they may be somewhere. It, it may be in the library. Uh, well, we somewhere. talked yeah. about the uh -huh. old history yeah. uh, mm -hmm. library in yeah. the medical school. Yeah. And, and they were so overstuffed. Mm -hmm. They weren't yeah. accepting stuff, so. Oh, one yeah. of the important things yeah. I noticed mm -hmm. was that while there was a lot of, I, Paul and I shared a cab, you might not remember it, the first time I went to the PAS meeting before mm -hmm. I came to Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and he was presenting his randomized clinical trial on Alcyon mm -hmm. and reduction in mm -hmm. mortality in mm -hmm. preterm infants. But I came back to Cincinnati and I found that the application of evidence was, was just okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in Cincinnati, there was a great desire to generate evidence, but not necessarily mm -hmm. requirements that you apply them reliably. Mm -hmm. You know, there would be conversations yeah. about yeah. them, there uh -huh. would be teaching, there'd yeah. be grand rounds, there'd be theories, uh -huh. but not necessarily that you had to apply them reliably. And mm -hmm. I was struck by the fact that if everybody knew that newborns shouldn't get cold, mm -hmm. preterm kids shouldn't get cold, then why would 25% of preterms in the nursery be cold. Uh -huh. and I got pretty obsessed with this stuff <laughs> and eventually gave up the laboratory to go back to really think about some of these stuff. And then mm -hmm. I think, Paul, mm -hmm. the database that you created in Alcyon combined with billing data mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to create a new DRG system mm -hmm. for your business. If you want to reach, really reach back, mm -hmm. Back in the late 1930s, this baby's okay. milk fund data that we're talking about, Bob Lyon, mm -hmm. yeah. a very yeah. kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. gentlemanly, senior member of the mm -hmm. faculty, published a series of seven, I believe maybe nine, papers on the causes of prematurity. Mm -hmm. And it stands, guess what? Mm -hmm. Prematurity was related to lack of prenatal okay. care, uh -huh. more likely to occur in teenage mothers, uh -huh. related to poor nutrition. Mm -hmm. We're still talking the about same, the same, same problems and questions. Awesome. And he recognized that and mm -hmm. uh, analyzed that. Mm -hmm. I would say 37, 38, 39, somewhere that's, back there. That's fascinating. Oh. That's great. You had earlier uh, talked about transporting infants. How did that get started well, and, two, two and part, why did it? Yeah. Two, two yeah. parts to that mm -hmm. and one that we haven't touched on mm -hmm. at all because one of the things that was developed was an outreach program. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there were, I think, 16, well, that counts Children's and University General mm -hmm. Hospital, 14, 13 newborn nurseries in the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And faculty members were assigned mm -hmm. to every, in, one to every institution. Okay. And people went on a regular basis, mm -hmm. I don't remember, three months, two months, yeah, four every months. Quarter. Mm -hmm. Every quarter. Mm -hmm. And it was either a morbidity mortality review mm -hmm. or a discussion of a particular mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. or a clinical care issue mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So a relationship was established mm -hmm. with every one of the institutions mm -hmm. and encouraged I don't know whether it was purposeful or not, but encourage the trans the mm -hmm. referral mm -hmm. of patients to mm -hmm. the children's hospital. Everyone was thinking about the hotline. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. the hotline. Yeah. There was a, a, a line Brilliant. from, mm -hmm. and it was a direct line mm -hmm. to the other mm -hmm. nurse. You picked up the phone on one yeah. end, yeah. and somebody in the newborn nursery, yeah. Yeah, I see you at children's mm -hmm. answered. Yeah. On the I'll other end. And Jim, so Jim it led. Sutherland, Jim Sutherland deserves credit, though. Mm -hmm. I actually presented a paper on that hotline. You did. You wrote a paper. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and it was Jim Sutherland who said, if you're going to do it, <laughs> study it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yeah, it yeah. wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't a researcher, mm -hmm. uh, but he forced my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If I wanted to do it, I had to mm -hmm. justify it. Yeah, yeah. So were, the, were the community nurseries generally 
uh, supportive, cooperative? Did they yes. want to keep? I mean, Good Sam uh, obviously had a fairly was, intense. Well, uh, yeah, it was a program. mixture. It was a mixture, uh -huh. of course, because mm -hmm. many of the smaller nurseries mm -hmm. this relieved them yes, of these yes. responsibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was very. But those who had their own mm -hmm. nurseries, Good Sam was one. Mm -hmm. Christ Hospital at the time mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Jewish hospital had, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And again, it sort of precedes this concept of level one, level two, mm -hmm. level three nurseries. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And once that became formalized, mm -hmm. so the level one took care of the basic yeah. newborn mm -hmm. care, newborn level two, you could have IVs, incubate, mm -hmm. no respirators, mm -hmm. and then babies that needed intensive care, surgery, cardiac, mm -hmm. whatever it was, the level three. Mm -hmm. And that formalized the whole thing and made it into a more uh, and that systematic. Came down nationally that came down or? through the March of Dimes and ah, through the okay. American Academy of Pediatrics, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there was it was a statewide. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, mm -hmm. there was a statewide program, mm -hmm. and you were licensed mm -hmm. as a yeah. level one, yeah. level two, or level three. Yeah. You were expected to uh, uh, practice within these particular limits. So if you uh -huh. couldn't do that. You sent the baby on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you there, 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 call, yeah. There's a, a side effect to this program that Irwin describes where we, mm -hmm. we were each assigned one or two nurseries, mm -hmm. hospitals mm -hmm. that we would become the advisors uh -huh. to or whatever. Uh -huh. We'd go to their grand rounds, yeah. we'd go to their mm -hmm. mortality mm -hmm. rounds. Mm -hmm. I was assigned to Oxford, mm -hmm. you know, in Ohio, uh -huh. and to their hospital. Uh -huh. I can tell you. You walk out of there just floored by the intelligence, by the well, caring, by right. the right. love, Jim Davis. Yeah, yeah. by the wisdom mm -hmm. in these hospitals. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were, the, you were in the <laughs> golden tower, mm -hmm. but by golly, there was, there was talent out there. And it kind of sounds yeah. like what you were describing with the early nurseries, yeah. where there wasn't a lot of treatment, treatment, but there was a lot of care. And uh, yeah. interesting. Well, interesting. no, Fascinating. Yeah. this was yeah. scientific excellence. Yeah, they were providing yeah. a yeah. high level of care, mm -hmm. and that was not competitive. Uh -huh. If Ellen had a baby there and she yeah. felt she couldn't take care of it, yeah. she, she, she wouldn't hesitate yeah. to have the baby transferred to children. Yeah. So that, was, yeah. that was not a problem. Yeah. Is this the, this the coordination with all the hospital regionalization? Is that unique in Cincinnati, or no. is this pretty wide? I think it's now? pretty wide now, no, but no. in those days it was probably uh, Ohio probably had, you know, more commitment to it. Mm -hmm. I think more connection to the nurseries, mm -hmm. the systematic quarterly kind of visits, mm -hmm. teaching, learning how to set up an incubator, mm -hmm. um, feedback. On the yeah. baby, that yeah, it was wasn't kind of wasn't that. unique, but I'd say we mm -hmm. they were late in Ohio. It was serious. We're leaders. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, actually, yeah. we had yearly meetings mm -hmm. with every academic group in Ohio okay. going to mm -hmm. one of or the other mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. and and presenting papers to each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really establishing a very warm, friendly relationship mm -hmm. with what should have been your enemies, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> but they I weren't. That way. They yeah. weren't. Yeah. They, they were yeah. just yeah. colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about yeah. collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we wanted to ask: Did you work with other divisions, and did that have a strong influence on um, outcomes for babies? Um, in the in the university on the university side, we stayed on the university side. So it's important to remember that we lived across the street mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. medical science building and it took me quite a while to figure out that we were part of children's. <laughs> because it was, there was a certain <coughs> perception of it. You know, we were a little kind of out there. Uh -huh. I don't know if you were encouraged to be out there, but mm -hmm. you definitely felt mm -hmm. special. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, at one time, as Paul knows when he was a resident, there was an entire department of pediatrics over here, sure. right? Yeah. But you were right. a resident. It, you yeah. were, there was the a pediatric the ward. End, the there was a pediatric yeah. clinic mm. right. and the pediatric emergency room. Yes. And then the tax levy and so on. And slowly, okay. pieces of that were transferred over to Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And the last remnant, mm -hmm. and that was partly because Jim wanted it that way, the last remnant of uh, that thing, uh, 
department uh -huh. was, was the newborn uh -huh. and premature nurseries uh -huh. that were here, Jim. and everything else had moved. He wanted that for autonomy, or well, it was. I mean, the delivery room Del remained well, delivery the room. center yeah, yeah. of okay. that that sure, work. Sure. The transport stuff came yeah. on yeah. a little bit later. So here, yeah. did you yeah. work with others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you worked with others like obstetricians. Well, we transferred. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, infants and diabetic, uh, the mm -hmm. diabetic, yeah. uh, the internal medicine. Mm -hmm. Helen Glick, who did, st who did studies on um, uh, hemorrhagic disorders mm -hmm. in Quaggish. older patients, hemophilia, whatever, mm -hmm. was published one of the early papers on the role of breastfeeding and vitamin K mm -hmm. on hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Mm -hmm. So there was interaction with mm -hmm. those divisions mm -hmm. more than there was with when uh -huh. we went to children's. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now you're interacting with mm -hmm. pediatric surgeons, surgeons virtually yeah. every day of the yeah. p uh, cardiology mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And then don't forget that we began maternal transports. In, yeah, and so that, I that cannot that. remember the year, yeah, but, but, but we began that? to understand the transport of the preterm infant mm -hmm. was at some risk mm -hmm. to their well-being and began maternal transports. Maternal fetal medicine began to be yes. a specialty. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Tariq uh, Siddiqui, um, Menachem, mm -hmm. Nidavnik, I'm trying to remember the names of the chairs, but we began then to transport mothers. Once we began the high-risk mothers, you know, the diabetic women, you know, time, timely C-section, mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things. Then we began to transport mothers. And at one point, I think we had 300 and maybe 50, 400 maternal transports a year to the uh -huh. University Hospital when, when I was the clinical director for uh -huh. the nurseries. Well, so U Uma's transition from being clinical director of the nursery mm -hmm. into where she is today, you know, the, mm -hmm the guru of, of, uh. <laughs> of, 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 of excellent care. Mm -hmm. In any mm -hmm. case, it started with a paper on the early discharge of infants mm -hmm. or the timely discharge of infants. Mm -hmm. And so it began with what she mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, of course, after mm -hmm. she became a statistician, too, oh. <laughs> uh, Everything blossomed. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a, a transition over yeah. into something better. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? No, I think on, that, on what, that what, I think what Paul was a very now. large part of that mm -hmm. early work mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we linked financial data mm -hmm. to <coughs> clinical data. Mm -hmm. We developed new DRG systems for Ohio mm -hmm. because we had data. And Harry Atherton. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Harry Atherton was uh, remained with you know with the Anderson Center until a couple uh -huh. of years ago. Uh -huh. Uh, world-class statistician, we began to report on regionalization, but outcomes, we were began to report on other alternatives to keeping kids in the nursery, the early discharge programs with three home visits and mm -hmm. reduction in cost. Mm -hmm. We created a new DRG system for newborns in Ohio, where we were paid not by these, just by, but by right. what, eight or nine categories mm -hmm. of segmentation that Medicaid kind of bought into. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think we began to then take those systems across the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a while, they were really only on this side of the street, and then probably in about 19, mid 1990s, maybe something like that, we began to go to the to the one south, and mm -hmm. you know, um, I think called Ricknick, and mm -hmm. began to then look at what we could do over there. Mm -hmm and began to then get involved in mm -hmm. the broader hospital around things that we were doing in the nursery mm -hmm. and opportunities that we had that could then be extended to the rest of the hospital. But I, I would say- how far yeah. it's yeah. come. Yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. Can I return for a moment mm -hmm. to your, your question mm -hmm. about uh, collaboration with other, mm -hmm. uh, o o other departments? I think there was a great deal of it, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the surgeons would come to General Hospital and operate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. The cardiologists would come over and see patients. Sure. You didn't have to send them over across yeah. the street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we knew each other. Uh, we just worked different places, kind mm -hmm. of. Uh, we I didn't agree. eat lunch together very much. Well, I think Irwin did. You ate in that room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That room <laughs> off of the but, but old cafeteria. Also, you yeah. are aware that yeah. <coughs> Uma and I <coughs> went through a period mm -hmm. when we were spending a lot of time at the zoo. 
was just about <laughs> to ask. No, 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 we had that on our list. But, yes, uh, we yes. We found out we we, tell us. we really stunk when it came to taking care of tigers and lions. Yeah. No, tell and us bears, how that but, came about. But, but <laughs> we could do we could do the we could do the gorilla thing, uh -huh. uh, and <coughs> we needed all the help we could get mm -hmm. from our colleagues. How, how did that How did that come about? The zoo connection. Oh, oh well, it came about before uh -huh. uh, Uber ever came. That mm -hmm. came because. Good Sam, because well, uh, Don Frank was Sam, involved with the zoo. Sam and, and Samantha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it was, well, exactly. It yeah. was Samantha Paul, who had Paul, seizures. Paul Russell. Yeah. She had, she had seizures, seizures, yes. And, and, right. and, 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 uh -huh. uh, but anyway, uh -huh. and then, well, we spent a lot of time there, and, and we learned so much from uh -huh. them, uh -huh. and we learned so much from our colleagues until we were shut down by, um, oh gosh, he, he was he he was chief uh, chief of staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Marty Myers. Marty Myers, oh, who was also head of infectious disease, oh. when he found out we were bringing gorillas oh. into the research foundation for surgery, oh. Oh. Uh, he pointed out <laughs> that diseases like. Uh, uh -huh. Monkey pox and yeah. such yeah. Uh, yeah. were real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that we but that partnership continues. We're still I called. So. I mean, Fiona's yeah. a great story. Yeah, I think yeah, it was right. yeah. 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 but you know. it, it was an amazing time. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. Wow. And we're still uh, pretty involved with the primates Good. when they're born. So Shrikant is now uh, on point for the work. Okay. And, and the intensive care nurses would volunteer their time. And they would go over. And I remember once Uma and I went over there and mm -hmm. we tried to take care of a couple of gorillas who were really sick, 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 sick. Mm -hmm. And we set up their IVs and it was a mess until the nurses from the intensive care came <laughs> over. And in five minutes they had that place organized. <laughs> we actually knew what we were giving the animals. Uh, I think we've changed life for gorillas in, in zoos. I think the yeah. mortality is close to zero if you go across the zoos. In those days, it used to be 20%. Ah, uh, that's great. So. Not only have human preemie mortality uh, uh, decreased, but yeah. So this is not a question that was on our yes, list, but it occurred to me as we we're talking, mm -hmm. I would imagine that there would have been a lot of ethical issues that would arise as you're taking care of these very tiny and sick babies. And I'm just wondering how, if that led to your involvement with the Institutional Review Board, or how did you get involved in that? It was just a wise guy that called him. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, there are a lot of ethical issues regarding neonatal intensive care, for sure. But those are dealt with in a different arena, right? Mm -hmm. There's a mm -hmm. clinical care ethics mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it's of interest because Mark Dine mm -hmm. who passed away recently mm -hmm. and was in private yeah. practice yeah. Mm -hmm. was the one who established the ethics the, the, the uh, clinical ethics human what's the right word yeah. care yeah. committee uh -huh. both at the un here at the university uh -huh. and at Children's Hospital uh -huh. when he okay. went off to Georgetown University uh -huh for a two-week two intensive course mm -hmm. on eth human ethics, mm -hmm. and then came back and established mm -hmm. these committees. Mm -hmm. But then there was the Institutional Review Board mm -hmm. that went back, established by the federal government mm -hmm. in the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Logie had been chairman of that mm -hmm. for many years, mm -hmm. and um, I remember Jennifer, mm -hmm. she at one time thought mm -hmm. about, considered, a career in neonatology, oh, but chose to go into clinical pharmacology. And when she decided to step down from that position, mm -hmm. she recommended to Bill Schubert that I should mm -hmm. take over the responsibility mm -hmm. for that. And maybe because of my interests in the neonatal, mm -hmm. it appealed to me. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I think I was considered bizarre within the institution because <laughs> I was one of the few people that enjoyed, got satisfaction out of being on the Institutional Review Board, which <laughs> to most people fight. is seen as a burden <laughs> and a chore mm -hmm. and something to be avoided mm -hmm. at all costs. Mm -hmm. But one, selfishly, mm -hmm. it, it allowed me to go back to my 
original intent to be a general pediatrician. Mm -hmm. So you were involved with cancer studies and GI mm -hmm. and radiology mm -hmm. and whatever, who has the bigger perspective. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, you know, you did something that was being supportive mm -hmm. of researchers, not to interfere mm -hmm. with what people were doing, but to try to mm -hmm. enable them yeah. to get through the hurdles to be able yeah. to get those, those things done. Okay. How did that, how did I end up in Cincinnati? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm having trouble answering yeah. that. Yeah. How did I end up chair of the IRB yeah. for 20 years? Uh -huh. I don't know, but I did. Yeah. 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 I think well, there were ethical, you know, you know, the multiple births. I mean, right during that period of time mm -hmm. where there were quadruplets and quintuplets mm -hmm. and sextuplets. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, I, I remember the first set of uh, quintuplets we took care of. It, it was... Uh, yeah, I remember the first set. Yeah, it was, uh, y you were... You know, on one hand, you were like, wow. <laughs> and on the other hand, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I think now the, there's a little bit more understanding, I think even maybe even better governance, mm -hmm. um, you know, around that question yeah. about, about multiple births. Yeah. But right as that whole thing was starting around, um, it was, uh, there, there was a lot. Well, it's typical new technology yeah. and leads to issues yeah. you just never yeah. anticipated. When I was a resident in mm -hmm. 63, 64, mm -hmm. and 65, mm -hmm. there was no such thing as informed consent. <laughs> the nursery uh -huh. was a place mm -hmm. for resuscitation. Mm -hmm. There were people like Jim Sutherland who ran studies in the nursery mm -hmm. on babies, mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not sure the parents were not informed, mm -hmm. but they it's were so ones. clean. He was so intent on doing it right, yeah. Yeah. that mm -hmm. when he was studying the giving of antibiotics mm -hmm. as a trial to see if we give newborn babies penicillin, I believe, mm -hmm. and, 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 and sulfur or streptomycin, mm -hmm. but he had a study where every resident knew when a baby came in, you had to tear open this envelope that you mm -hmm. couldn't see through. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you couldn't see through, he made mm -hmm. sure of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. and it decided whether or not this baby got antibiotic. Mm -hmm. he, he did it right. Yeah. And you yeah. could just see that he was yeah. doing it right. Mm -hmm. But that but was the yeah. era of yeah. resuscitation. Mm -hmm. The era of nurturing the had to come later. Mm -hmm. Paul mm -hmm. raised the question here about informed consent. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, informed consent was, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an issue. Yeah. The IRBs didn't get discussed yeah. until the very late 60s and established in the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. I had a copy of the first consent form mm -hmm. at Children's Hospital around 1972 or something. Fred Silverman, I believe, was chairman of the committee at the time. It was shorter than yeah, what you have just, here. Just it was on one paper. page. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I understand that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my child will be enrolled mm -hmm. in a study. Mm -hmm. The r risks and benefits of which have not been established. Mm -hmm. And um, I agree to participate in this and some of the sign. And I often thought that was probably better informed <laughs> than the 17-page than the <laughs> consent form uh -huh. that lists every possible risk mm -hmm. Benefits, mm -hmm. statistical analysis, mm -hmm. yeah. and so yeah. on and so yeah. on. Yeah. People, but mm -hmm. then, in, informing parents of what mm -hmm. was being done mm -hmm. was not even being considered. Yeah, just a different, different period. Okay, we're um, we've had a good conversation. We're not out of time, but I want to give you all the opportunity if there's any anything we haven't touched on that needs to be brought out. Uh, what do you in remember? Area. What do I remember? I don't remember those exchange transfusions. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I remember we had the baby bird respirators. Yeah. There was this other one. It was a big Emerson. Buck, and Emerson. I had one baby on that who survived. And, and but I didn't know enough about it. What was in the it. Emerson? It had air? a pressure cooker. <laughs> okay. Pressure. Uh, to uh -huh. keep the air warm. Uh huh. Okay. It had a bicycle pump. Uh, that was driven by mm -hmm. a motor that mm -hmm. turned. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Emerson was a genius mm -hmm. inventor, and uh, I count as one of the high points of my life. 
seeing him at a convention about a year before he died. And he was showing new stuff, mm -hmm. all of it. Wow. He, it was a Rube Goldberg, uh, but it uh, worked. Uh, yeah, well, kind of. Was he an engineer? <laughs> an engineer? Huh? Uh, was he an engineer? What, what, what was his background? Was he, he an, was engineer? an engineer? He was yeah. an engineer. Yeah. You're talking about collaboration, yeah, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, engineers yeah, yeah. forget. You know, yes. that, that was a yeah. big. That was well, a big talk thing about too. Yeah. early technology. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Mark Dine before. Yeah. Back in the early 1960s, when IVs were being started, mm -hmm. there was one IV pump in the entire city, <laughs> in the <laughs> pre nursery at the General uh -huh. Hospital, uh -huh. and Mark had a baby at Bethesda Hospital. Mm -hmm which could, he could not transport mm. because there was no transport mm -hmm. system and he was trapped. Mm -hmm. And he came to Premier Nursery, got the pump, and brought it to, the, the, brought the pump. to, to Bethesda Hospital and <laughs> hooked the baby up to the pump <laughs> at Bethesda. That was the only IV pump for, for, oh, for a baby oh, for in the city. Sakes. <laughs> sakes. That is amazing. Amazing. It's kind of mind-boggling to see the changes that yeah. have happened in mm -hmm. your careers. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not just mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. The changes, it's mind-boggling mm -hmm. when you think of the rapidity mm -hmm. of the changes. You said yeah. within our career, right. within, within only yeah. part of our probably. careers, mm -hmm. it's the curve is so steep. 10, 20 years. But we, still, yeah. we still well, have still not achieved mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. I kind of hope we'd achieve, mm -hmm. and that's it called is. intact survival. Mm -hmm thriving mm. families, mm -hmm. something that could be translated to more than just the United States. Mm. Uh, well, and I mm. mean, Uma has mm -hmm. worked very hard mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. but it's a rarity. No, you go to the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'll at least disagree some. Mm -hmm. When you look at neonatal mortality mm -hmm. worldwide, mm -hmm. the United States is not leading the world. Mm -hmm. The United States, 14, 15, where are yeah. we now? Mm -hmm. 16? But that's, a, that's related to poverty. And well, it's, 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 just it's saying. Prevent, it, it's when you look at it state by state, uh -huh. Ohio is not the outstanding. It's somewhere in the middle, 25th, 24th in the And then the don't country. forget that maternal so there, mortality is on the right. So, yeah, yeah the, the yeah. level of care that can be provided mm -hmm. is f fantastic, mm -hmm. the best in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's not being delivered to everybody that needs it. Yeah. My Why is the mortality the rate yeah. in Mississippi three times the mortality rate in Utah? Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it, yeah. but it isn't being done. My right professor now. of obstetrics mm -hmm. at the U University of Utah mm -hmm. said that the greatest challenge to pediatrics was preventing prematurity. Mm -hmm. Probably is still but those were the papers. We do have yeah. some those there. are the papers yeah. Dr. Lyons wrote yeah, in yes. 1937. Yes. So we we're do still have some there. early pilot yeah. data in uh -huh. Avondale. Uh -huh. We have gone almost four years uh -huh. with no extreme prematurity. Uh -huh. So there's a so we a have ray the, of hope. we have the prototype, uh -huh. and we're just in the process of scaling it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not all over. No, no, more to come. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. Any, any final words, Paul? <laughs> I guess you've now seen how Uma became my boss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was inevitable, yeah. No, thank you all for coming. Thank this you. is fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we'll go Thanks home for taking the time. <laughs>